I'm at Watches and Wonders 2022. I've got a coffee, there's a whole load of new watches. I'm gonna kick this off with checking out Rolex. Every year with Rolex, there seems to be this massive hype. And I guess it's our own fault because, and, and I'm most certainly part of that fault of building our own hype up, building our own expectations up based on nothing other than rumors. And then when the launch actually happens, there always seems to be this massive crash of anticipation that kind of, it's just a bit of, all oh, right. But this year there's been little change. This year is much more controversial. What Rolex has done with the GMT Master II is nothing short of odd. But let's start off with the Air King. The Air King is actually my favorite release of this year from Rolex. They've made a few, just like in normal Rolex fashion, they've made a few subtle changes with the Air King, but I think they're very good. So we have a brand new case, and this case is more purposeful. Rather than having the rounded edges like on the Datejust, the case has more of a Submariner style case. It's got straight edges, and we also have these crown guards as well. The whole thing just appears more beefy, appears more purposeful, and I really like that. The dial has had a change as well. The dial on the Air King has always been a bit of a funny one because of all of the fives, it's, it's kind of littered with fives, but they've balanced the dial. They've added a zero to the first five, which I know is gonna be another, oh, they've just added a zero thing, but actually the impact I think is really quite big. It makes the dial so much more symmetrical and it, it, it's one of those things that it now just feels right. It looks right. I think Rolex has elevated this watch a lot with those little changes of the case, with the little change on the dial. It's still a bizarre watch. It still doesn't make any sense. It's called Air King, but it's inspired by the instrument panel from the Bloodhound Project, which I don't think Rolex are involved with anymore. And the Bloodhound Project is a car. So it, it's still a lost watch, but it's now a good looking lost watch. The day date has had a change. We now have a platinum day date with a fluted bezel and this looks brilliant. I'm a big fan of the fluted bezel. I'm a big fan of the day date range as a whole. And I absolutely love the blue dial that comes on the platinum watches. This is a killer combination. I've, I've kind of been putting off talking about this watch because I'm really undecided about it. The GMT Master II now comes in green and black and a left-handed crown and a left-handed date window. It looks odd. It looks like it's being put in the display upside down. I'm not bashing it. I'm just saying how I feel. I don't understand it. I, I kind of feel like Rolex is trying to do something fun. And I hate making assumptions. Ah, oh, sorry, it's only Rolex. I hate making assumptions because I, I don't know what the motivation is. And I don't think Rolex would actually share what the motivation was behind this watch. It does look like they're trying to be fun and different with a watch that is typically seen as a relatively serious offering from Rolex. It's one of their professional watches. So it, I, I guess it should be serious. And of course, what is the name gonna be for this watch? We've got the Batman, we've got the Pepsi, we've got the Kermit. It can't be the Sprite, can it? Is this gonna be the Green Lantern? Another release from Rolex is the Yachtmaster 42, which is now in yellow gold. That's all I've got on that watch. Um, looks cool. Rolex is one of those weird brands where it's kind of a two-sided launch. You've got what they are actually launching, but then on the other side, with perhaps more interest, you've got what they've discontinued. And it's hard to see what Rolex has discontinued because they don't announce what has been discontinued. It's just a matter of, you need to figure it out yourself. From what I've noticed, they've reduced the offering within the 41 millimeter OPs. The notable one is the Tiffany dial, so no doubt the price of that is just gonna go nuts, even more nuts than what it was. For me, the highlight with the Rolex has definitely been the Air King. It feels more purposeful, it feels more balanced, and I, I, think, I think it's cool now. I, I really quite like it. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this new GMT, because it's, I don't like change. So it might grow on me, but right now I, I, I think it's an odd one, I, I do. But also I feel like Tudor is the fun part of Rolex. Rolex don't need to be fun. They have Tudor to do the cool stuff. Tomorrow I have a meeting with Tudor to check out their new watches. I've already launched a video on two new IWC watches, so I'll put a link in the description for that one. I'll be doing a roundup video of Watches and Wonders, kind of my little highlights, what really stands out. Make sure you subscribe because I have a lot more content coming on the new releases. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. And if you check out the watch straps and watch accessories, I haven't plugged anything. I've got nothing with me to plug. <laughs> I've got watch straps and watch accessories over at BarkandJack.com. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at BarkandJack, and I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.